Well, a survey or study released yesterday on hydroxychloroquine for use on COVID patients is shockingly irresponsible. And as top virologists are saying, perhaps even agenda driven. It was published in preprint form and not yet peer reviewed, and it claims to show that hydroxychloroquine shows no effectiveness against COVID and its use could actually, according to this survey, lead to an even higher fatality rate. Sounds terrible. Well, that's when the headline readers who hate Trump and, of course, this network, that's when they pounce. Aha! Trump and some on Fox reported that patients were benefiting from hydroxychloroquine. Obviously, I was one of them reporting on that. And now this study, they say, shows that hydroxy kills people. So... Not only is there no medical benefit, Elizabeth, this study shows higher death rates among patients who took it. Yes, much higher death rates. It could actually be harming patients who take it. Medical professionals have repeatedly urged caution, but the president and his allies at Fox News aren't known for patients or for caution. They're misleading their viewers. Why would we ever think a Fox News star or any president should be promoting a drug? It's outlandish. Well, first of all, I'm stating the obvious here, but CNN has just zero credibility. One of their anchors this week just made a fake post-COVID recovery video. Okay, they have zero standing to critique anyone else's motives or trustworthiness. Maybe people actually want to help America. Ever heard of it? Well, the jackals at Media Matters thought they had their prey trapped. And now journalism is such a joke that even the Washington Post and tonight the New York Times re reflexively joined the pig pile. It's just pathetic. Now, I'm not a doctor, I don't play one on TV, but renowned French virologist, Dr. Didier Raoult, released his own study on hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin just a few weeks ago. It demonstrated 91% effectiveness in more than 1,000 patients with zero side effects. There was one outcome that was not good, but in the patients that recovered, there were zero side effects. Well, today, that same professor, who's a renowned infectious disease uh, uh, expert, issued a devastating response to the researchers who looked at the Veterans Affairs patients. He said, in the current period, it seems that passion dominates rigorous and balanced scientific analysis and may lead to scientific misconduct. And this article, a study he's referring to, is an absolutely spectacular example of this. The analysis of the data shows two major biases. He goes on to mention three. Lymphopenia is twice as common in the HCQ hydroxychloroquine groups as the non-HCQ group. And there is an absolute correlation between lymphopenia and fatality rate, which is well known. Well, that obviously would account for a higher rate of death in those two groups, which, which the anchors were so, so, so excited to talk about. Well, another reason the, the study is an absolute mess is that it appears from one of the tables in the study, it appears that it shows significant differences in outcomes that hydroxychloroquine, hydroxychloroquine plus azithromycin was given after patients were intubated. Well, as doctors on the show have said multiple times, and as Professor Raoul writes, this is unreasonable at the time of the cytokine storm. That's after you got really sick, as it is unlikely that hydroxychloroquine alone would be able to control patients at this stage of the disease. Translation, the later you take hydroxychloroquine, likely the worse the outcome will be. So you shouldn't be administering it here uh, without explanation, okay, in that level of the disease, that stage of the disease. Well, the Trump-hating morons were waving around this survey. They didn't even notice that, quote, incomprehensibly, the untreated group actually received azithromycin in 30% of the cases without this group being analyzed in any distinct way. All right, newsflash, azithromycin is also a proposed treatment for COVID with in vitro efficacy. Okay, it doesn't take a PhD in microbiology, guys, to understand that the, the group that was untreated cannot then be treated with meds that are actually in their own way, perhaps partially effective as therapies. Even the Secretary of Veteran Affairs had to admit the weakness of this study. That's an observational study. It's not a clinical study. It was done on a small number of veterans. Um, sadly, those of whom were in the last stages of life um, and the drug was given to them. We know the drug has been working. 
on middle age and younger veterans. The drug to be delivered to the city of New York. Uh, Working in, in stopping the progression of the disease. So this begs the question, why did the Associated Press, one of the few truly professional media outlets left in America, why did they go with the story? Now check out its headline. Uh, I mean, there it is. More deaths, no benefit from malaria. This is, a, this is the AP. Do they have any standards? Surely they have some really smart folks over there who just want to help people and you know, have all the caveats in there. But at least read the study or the survey. Well, like many others, I agree that wider studies, of course they should be conducted. They should be ongoing to determine the efficacy of this drug and any. But why deny or even mention the positive results from legitimate studies in favor of these shoddy surveys, like the one we just discussed, uh, that seem to be irresponsibly then repurposed by the AP? So what's driving this? It's a blind obsession to disprove the effectiveness of a drug that is being used right now, tonight, in medical centers across America with COVID patients. A drug that's been around for decades. Is this, is this a mad impulse to what, discount any benefit from the therapy? Is it triggered by pure hatred of Trump, of Fox, of me? I don't know. Is it motivated by a secret desire to keep America hopeless? Or the shutdown going on through the election? I, I, I'm open to any theory at this point. If the impulse was purely scientific and health focused, why haven't we seen the same volume of coverage and scrutiny of other far more expensive and also, you know, no control, completely double blind study, unproven treatments? Actemra, remdesivir, I've talked about both of them. Uh, just to name a few, there are others being looked at. Well, of course, hydroxychloroquine, as we've said before, is very cheap. It's highly scalable. It's ran around for decades and decades and decades. Big Pharma does not make its money on cheap generics. Newsflash number two, they make their money on new drugs and vaccines. Some of those can be great. They might work better. They might be, you know, the be all end all. That'll be fabulous. But remember, a lot of the big drug companies, they do some great work. I'm not saying they, they don't, but they do give a lot of money to NIH, CDC, and the WHO. Just saying. 